Here are a few example problems from your assignment. This first question, they're asking for the common ratio. So you need to remember that the common ratio is the current term divided by the previous term. So if I pick any term and I divide it by the previous, I get the common ratio. So in this first line, negative 50 divided by negative 5 is positive 10. Negative 500 divided by negative 50 is positive 10. Negative 5,000 divided by negative 500 is also positive 10. It's what you multiply to get by to get the next number. In the second one, negative 63 divided by negative 9 is positive 7. And if I divide negative 441 by negative 63, I get positive 7. And negative 3087 divided by negative 44, negative 441 is positive 7. Next one's a little more friendly numbers. But again, notice 24 divided by 12, 12 divided by 6, 6 divided by 3. All those give you 2. And the last one, negative 24 divided by negative 3 gives you 8. And so if I take 8 and multiply it by any number, I get the next one in the sequence. The common ratio is what you multiply by to get the next number in the sequence. In this question, they give you the common ratio. And again, remember the common ratio is what you multiply by. So you multiply by 4 to get your next number. So your second term is 6 times 4, 24. Your next term, you multiply by 4 one more time, and you get 96. And 96 times 4 is 384. Then we're skipping, we're jumping clear to 8. But remember how we did this. We're starting at 6. To get the next number in the sequence, I multiply by 4. Um, to get from the first term to the eighth term, that's seven places I had to move. And six times four to the power of seven is a big number, 98,304. In this question, we're using the formula that I went over in the original video which is y equal to start times 1 plus r to the power of t. So in this case, you're starting with 400. There are 400 crimes. It's increasing by 4%, 1 plus 0 0.04, which again, you could write as 1.04. Uh, you do have to figure out the time. 1990 to 2016, just subtract the years, 2016 minus 1990 is 26, so I'm going to go to the power of 26. So 26 times, you'll increase 4%, and 400 times 1.04 to the power of 26, it says round to the nearest whole number, would be 1,109. And this is a question, you're decaying. Decaying means decrease. So, our equation, y equal to start times 1 plus r is actually 1 minus r to the power of t. So we're starting with 13,000 polar bears and it's decaying at 3%. That's 1 minus 3% is 0 0.03 to the power of t. Well, from 2013 
to 2038, subtract those, 2038 minus 2013 is 25 years, so I'll go to the power of 25. Punching this in the calculator, I get 6,000 and 71 to the nearest whole number. In this question, they use the word depreciate. And depreciate, again, is another way of saying it decreases. So it's the same form as the last one. Y equal to start times 1 minus R, because we're decreasing, to the power of T. So using these numbers, a car that starts off at $25,000, if it loses 6% per year, 1 minus 0 0.06, what would it be worth after 14 years? So I end up with 10513 dollars and it says round to the nearest cent so we're looking for two decimal spots 0 0.08 eight cents ten thousand five hundred thirteen dollars and eight cents here's one where we're compounding monthly this is what happens in a normal savings account Remember that our original formula, y equal to start times 1 plus r to the t, that's annual growth. That's what happens when you every year you increase a certain percent. r is your percent. Well, in this case, it's going to be y equal to start, which is $23,000, 1 plus 0 0.05 but it's monthly so that annual rate of 5% gets divided by 12 and then again going to the power of 12 just gives you one year so I'm going to do 35 years so I have to go 12 times 35 to get the number of months in 35 years make sure you include those parentheses uh, around 12 times 35 or work out 12 times 35 first. So I'll punch this in my calculator. 23,000 times 1 plus 0 0.05 divided by 12 to the power of 12 times 35. And I get a very large number. Y equals... $131,875.52. Last example, quarterly is how stocks and mutual funds pay. So, your equation, which is annual growth each year, y equal to start times 1 plus r to the t, is y equal here, you're starting with 5,000, 1 plus, your rate is 4%, 0 0.04, but it's quarterly, so that 4% is annual, and st stocks and and the mutual funds pay quarterly, four times a year. So they take the annual rate, 4%, and they divide it by four, because they're four quarters in a year, every three months. Now, when I go to the power of four, that just gives me one year. But here I'm going to go 31 years. So, again, I need to put in parentheses around four times 31, or the 
Desmos or the calculator won't do it correctly or just work out four times 31 first. But when I punch this in the calculator, 5,000 times 1 plus 0 0.04 divided by 4 to the power of 4 times 31, I get 17,000. $171 and to the nearest penny, 98 cents. I spoke too soon. Looking back at the examples, I didn't see a, only one with annual growth. Here's one more example with annual growth. So our formula, y equal to start times 1 plus r to the power of t. In this question, you're starting with 21,000. Your rate is 3%, 1.03 to the power of time, which is 28 years. Notice again, this is annual growth. And we just use the standard formula. We don't divide it by 12 or 4. Uh, we don't manipulate it at all. Annual growth is the standard formula. And if we invest in real life, $21,000, and it gets 3%, 1 plus 0 0.03, or 1.03, to the power of 28 years, we get... Forty-eight thousand forty-six dollars and forty-eight cents.